Hi there and welcome back to our lesson on the trigonometric graphs where we're looking at the general form for the sine graph and uh, we've seen that the general form is y is equal to a sine and inside the sine we have p and p is multiplying a bracket x minus b and then outside of the sign we are adding a C and so far what we've had a look at was A and C we saw A was a, a shape it, de it determined part of the shape and C determined part of the position how did it do that well A was the amplitude amplitude and the amplitude is how high it is above the center line so C was the center line now just so that this makes sense let's draw a quick sketch of that just a small sketch demonstrated this my graph y equal to C is the center line okay so if C is 0 this is the x-axis okay and a is how high it reaches up here okay to be hundred um, more correct it's actually the absolute value of a in other words just the positive portion of a okay? and if a was negative it would look like that it would reflect in the x-axis that were the two that we've already had a look at and one thing that I want you to notice is that amplitude is a vertical it changes the graph vertically it stretches it vertically the center line you can also see the center line shifts up or down okay so if uh, y is equal to negative 1 for example then the graph would be down here if it's if it's uh, 7 then it would be up here somewhere so this is a vertical shift Vert shift both of these change my graph in a vertical direction it influences the graph vertically why is that well you'll notice that the difference between a C and P and B is the fact that they we encounter them outside of the sine function okay so whatever result we get in here if we were to do this calculation the first thing we'll, that we'll do is we'll give put in a value for x then we'll subtract b and that answer will be multiplied by p the result we then get i'm going to from now on call it theta so theta is now whatever angle i get inside here and that's going to be called my uh, input angle so my this is my input angle and putting it into the sine function gives me some some sort of ratio a number between negative 1 and 1 okay so somewhere between negative 1 and 1 is what's going to come out here that is then multiplied with a and then c is added so you can see that a and c only happens after I've calculated the sine okay now we're going to have a look at how do the parameters influence when they are influencing the input angle this theta is going to get changed before we apply the sign okay and we're going to start with P let's start with P what does P change well let's look at the basic fx basically as px and to demonstrate I'll do it with an example let's say fx is equal to sine of 2x notice now that theta so I'm going to have this yes theta x is now the, the, the input theta is the input angle what I get after I've multiplied my input with 2 and then sine of theta is the result I get when that input angle is evaluated according to sine so for example we know that if the input angle is 0 then sine of theta is 0 if the input angle is 30 degrees then sine of 30 degrees is a half when the input angle is 45 degrees then sine of 
45 is rounded to about 0, 0,71. When the input angle is 60 degrees, sine of 60 degrees gives me 0, 0,866. Okay, I should just make it 87. Almost 0, 0,987. And if it's if the input angle is 90, so in other words, sine of 90 gives me 1. Okay, so that's that's the basic that we do know and we don't uh, we don't have a problem with that but the problem that we have here is for theta to be zero we now ask what must x be well for 2x to equal zero 2x equals zero x equals zero so if my input if I put in a zero in here okay my theta will equal zero and my sine of theta will equal zero as well. But here it comes in here. What if I want my input angle to be 30 degrees? So I want 2x to equal 30 degrees. So that sine of 30 can give me a half. What must x equal? Well, x must equal 15 degrees. Because 2 times 15 degrees gives me 30 and sine of 30 gives me a half so x must only be 15 degrees okay to get 45 x is going to have to be 22.5 and 22.5 times 2 gives me 45 as my input angle and sine of 45 is 0 0.7 to get 60 x is going to be 30 degrees because 30 times 2 gives me 60 and sine of 60 is 0 0.87 to get 90 sine is uh, x is going to have to be 45 okay because sine of 2 times 45 is 90 sine of 90 is equal to 1 okay so here I've got a table of content where this is my this is x theta is equal to x uh, sorry 2x 2x so sine of theta is sine of 2x okay so if x is 0 sine of 2x is 0 if x is 15 sine of 2x is a half if x is 22.5 sine of 20 uh, sine of 2x is 0.7 so let's just draw draw that part here okay, I hope I've got enough space now okay so one and negative one and when x is zero so this is my y values and these are my x values when x is zero sine of 2x is zero now I see I'm jumping in 15 22.5 so there's 15 okay when x is 15 then y is equal to a half when x is 22.5 so that's around about there when x is 22.5 I'm at about 1 2 3 4 I'm at about 0.7 there okay when x is 30 then I'm at 8.7 almost 0.9 around about there okay and that's at 30 degrees and when x is equal to 45 degrees I'm at my maximum one there I've reached my maximum value of one okay and then we we remember that this actually goes on the next one is a hundred and twenty a hundred and thirty five a hundred and fifty and a hundred and eighty okay and that gives me the opposite direction here that gives me 0 comma 87 0 comma 71 0 comma 5 sorry that's 180 and this is 0 again now for theta yeah you can see x each time is half of theta because 2 times x must equal theta so this must be 60 that is 70 no 67.5 this is 75 180 is 90 okay so I'm just going to jump in 15s here it seems like that's what we're doing jumping in 15s okay so 
60 degrees is there then I'm back here again okay 67.5 is here let me just make that dot 67.5 is halfway between 60 and 75 takes me up here okay there we go and then 75 gives me at a half so that's this point 75 and at 90 I'm back where I started okay or back on the x-axis okay and there we see there goes my sine graph well part of it the first part of it okay and we then know well this part here is just going to go down to uh, let me just draw it prettier down to negative and back up here okay so I used to reach my my lowest point at 270 so sine of 270 is equal to negative 1 so my input angle must be 270 what does it mean 2x is equal to 270 x must therefore be half of 270 okay which is what 135 so this will be the point 135 okay I used to complete my cycle at 360 because sine of 360 gives me zero again okay but now what must X be X must be half of that so this isn't 160 here it's a hundred and eighty okay so what do we notice though it doesn't look like it on my sketch because my X values are stretched out okay I notice that to complete a whole cycle instead of doing it in 36 degrees I'm doing it in a hundred and eighty degrees okay why because every point gets multiplied by two so everything is happen happening twice as fast to get to my maximum point I only need to be at 45 because that's going to be multiplied by two to give me 90 to get back to my x-axis for the first time I don't need to be at 180 I only need to be at 90 because it's going to be doubled by the 2 times x so everything is happening twice as fast okay so we notice here that my period my period is equal to 180 degrees period being the length of the cycle how long it takes to complete one full wave and that's 180 degrees as a matter of fact if I were to draw a little table here with different values for P this is what it will look like okay let's just see what happened how can I it, it used to be the normal sine function has a period so if I just have fx is equal to sine x okay my period usually is 360 now it is half of that why because I divided it with the 2 so if I were to calculate period this will be my p-values my period will be 360 divided by P so if P doesn't exist it in other words if there's no P there's actually a 1 P is 1 360 divided by 1 so if P is equal to 1 P will never be 0 by the way otherwise you won't have an a, a, a X in there so and you do need an X so 360 divided by 1 would just be 360 okay if it's equal to 2 360 divided by 2 will be 180 if it's equal to 3 360 divided by 3 will be 120 which means that this the original 360 um, period or wave that completes its cycle in 360 degrees and now completes it in 120 degrees now 120 degrees and this is 90 plus 15 is 105 plus 15 is 120 so that graph if I had to go and draw draw a graph that a normal sign graph but with a period uh, of 120 I will reach my maximum instead of at 90 degrees which is the normal maximum would be a third of that at at 30 degrees okay 
in, uh, coming back to the x-axis instead of being at 180 degrees which is the normal I will already do it at 60 degrees okay. to get to my minimum point which used to be 207 would now be a 270 sorry would now be at a third of that that is at 90 to get back I said to complete my cycle I now do it in a third of the time that's 120 so this is not a big graph. Okay. This is still not a good graph, but more or less the idea. Okay, it's just this first part looks a bit ugly. Okay. Cool. That's more or less what sine of 3x will look like. Okay, and I'm doing way too many examples at this point. Okay. But I think you get the idea. Just a little bit of a challenge is what if I have fractions? Okay. What if my P is a half? In other words, it might look like this, sine of a half X, or, ex which is exactly the same, X over 2. Okay. What is the period for something like this? Well, this time, 360 is not divided by 2, but divided by a half, which means it is multiplying 2. Uh, it's being multiplied by 2. So 360 divided by a half gives me 720. And how about if P is negative? If P is a negative value, well, for that, please consider the following. That sine of negative theta is equal to negative sine of theta. Because we assume negative angles are in the third quadrant, sorry, fourth quadrant. Sine is negative in the fourth quadrant. So we change it to a first quadrant angle, but multiply it with a negative. Okay, the same thing applies. If I have sine of negative 2x, this is the same as negative sine of 2x. So I see that my period is still being divided with 2 so this thing's period is 360 divided by 2 180 okay so to be more correct here I'm not dividing by P but again by the absolute value of P and I notice that now my amplitude is still 1 but A is actually negative 1 now, now when a is equal to negative 1, it is reflected in the x-axis. So that would look like this. Same graph, but reflected in the x-axis. Another way of looking at it is that when I multiply my x with a negative, I'm actually reflecting in the y-axis. So if this is my original graph, is my original graph if I reflect it in the y-axis this axis it looks like this but if you look at that you can see oh but this looks exactly the same as a reflection in the x-axis okay notice how it's exactly the same as a reflection in the x-axis I think I'm going to stop this video at um, at this point and in the next video we'll look at our final parameter this B okay how does that B influence my graph the only thing I'd like to end off with now is just to tell you that P is again a shape parameter it determines the shape because it squeezes it and it is a horizontal squeeze which changes the period Okay, well, squeeze or stretch, it depends. Okay, cool. With that, bye.